What's up guys? Uh, I don't know, I'm holding keys. Welcome to another video. <laughs> Today is on the 240Z. As you can see, we've cut the core support out. So now it's just an engine that we can just rip out to the front if we wanted to. Uh, the reason why it's like this is because this project has once again scoped out of control. Yeah, these guys have developed some crazy V-mount uh, ideas for the cooling system. In addition to that, I'm super close to having all the wiring done, so we might actually be able to do a first start attempt today. But the, uh, the V-mount stuff is probably going to be a, a hell of a journey. <laughs> Yeah, um, if we don't start it today, we will start it on Saturday, but this is going to give us an opportunity to use our tubing bender and make a cool tubular front end too. So we're just going to get right into this because it's a ton of work. Yeah, let's do it. So the first thing I got to do is cut the rest of the core support out. Um, dude, the engine looks so cool. Look at it, look at it in the shot. Let me see this shit. God damn. It looks like it has like 400 turbos because everything's circular. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get to work uh, doing some more slicing so we have the most room to put the most nonsense. Shut up, Dustin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, uh, what is the benefits of V-mounting in the first place? Who knows, it looks cool. James, we need some mouth diarrhea as to why V-mounts better. Why V-mounting is better? Sam was saying it increases the surface area. Yeah, increases the effect which, of the surface area. Which is true, because you gotta think about like, if you're looking at your like 40 inch wide, like 40 inch TV, if you like measure it diagonally, it's like 40 inches, but it's not that tall and it's not that wide. It's because the diagonal is longer. This sounds like whatever his fucking name is on Hoonigan, right? Oh, lab coat guy? No, no, the other guy, the dumb one. The, oh yeah, Brad. Yeah, Bad Daddy, Bad Daddy Braddy. Uh, but anyway, what? Big Chingus Dingus. dingus. <laughs> big, Big, big dingus, big, ding, big dingus, dingus I don't know. <laughs> guys are having a lot of out there. Yeah. But Dude, it's so bad. It's better. That's all they need to know. It's better. It's more efficient. Actually, and and the, the real winner here is when you mount the intercooler up above it, like this, you don't have anything blocking your radiator. You don't have anything blocking your intercooler. So regardless of whether or not I can remember the math that proves that this actually does effectively increase the amount of air hitting your shit, it does, at the very least, make two separate air streams for your stuff. There so. we go. All the reason we need. <laughs> basically, it's really good for cross-flow radiators. So basically, there's two types of radiator. There is a vertical flow, which this is. Tank on top, tank on bottom. Coolant flows top to bottom. And there's a cross-flow radiator where there's a tank on your left, tank on your right. Coolant flows across. On a cross-flow radiator, basically, when you kick the radiator at an angle, the tubes become off horizontal and the air, incoming air is able to hit them at an angle and the fucking train <laughs> fucking shit my pants. Like, Dire Ugh. Directional mic, bro, we're fine. Oh, that's true. Anyways, when you take those tubes and you kick them on an angle, the incoming air no longer only hits the front of the tube, it now hits the bottoms of the tube and increases cooling. Yeah. We're not getting any of that benefit because the wrong type of radiator. But we're doing this because of the other things that James was talking about. So, one of the first things we need to do to make this happen is this is the position that we want it in. It's not touching the pulleys and it's at the angle that we want. So we're gonna make some temporary brackets so we know uh, how to build our tubular support. Devin's just informed me that the uh, fuel pump wiring is done. It is, but for testing purposes, since we've decided we're not gonna do first start until Saturday because we're gonna get all the front end stuff sorted out. I've got a secondary uh, hookup on it so we could just uh, Let me test our, our fuel system and see if everything is. I put is gas in it, but I'm gonna go to the front of the car and look at that uh, fuel pressure gauge. Yeah, make, make sure the pressure doesn't skyrocket. You got that double wall, bro, bro. I, I can't see it, Sam, because I'm short. Can you film that for me and look at the gauge? It's gotta fill up, though. I mean, it shouldn't take this long, but yeah. All right, so we got uh, one leak. One leak out of an entirely custom system isn't too bad, but go ahead and bump it. It's a huge leak because we have a lot of fuel pump. Yeah, so we got we got two two fifties. Yeah, brown positive. Oh yep, that was just one single bump, and you could see that we're clearly moving a shit ton of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll we'll handle that tomorrow. It looks like it's the uh, the fitting on the end of the soft line either is shitty or not tightened is all the way. The but Superman yeah, it's one of the shitty red and blue ones, so it's probably just garbage. Get that replaced, and there's no leaks anywhere else. So 
Not too bad. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't gotten fuel pressure up, vape niche, bro. We haven't gotten fuel pressure up enough to really know if any of the other ones gonna explode, but so far it doesn't look like they are. So that's good. Yeah. It's decent. So we said tomorrow, but we don't want to deal with it tomorrow, so we're doing it right now. We found out what the problem was, and it wasn't my fuel lines. Yeah, if you some... look at, if you look into the firewall, somebody's been wiring in there, and somebody's been drilling all sorts of relays and shit into the firewall. And uh, one of these uh, fuel feed hoses was punctured. Right there. Like Sam, you fucking asshole, wiring all sorts. Did, of they, shit. did that go clean through both sides? No, nah, it couldn't have. It literally doesn't stick out far enough to do that. I don't know why it's so fucked up, but. So yeah, um, a self-tapping screw was the issue here, uh, and now I know what I need to do tomorrow. Yeah, just replace this one line, oh, and then yeah. test it before putting everything back in, so we don't have to take it all back out if some asshole puts another self-tapping screw through it. Well, we've got the engine out. We've also had the opportunity to extend the uh, the throw on the slave cylinder, and um, right now we're attempting to notch the motor mount because it's currently in the way of our steering shaft. Which we're gonna need to steer the damn car, so. Uh, taking the engine out wasn't necessarily a bad thing, and we should be able to pop it in real easily tomorrow. Probably difficult for you guys to see, but um, steering shaft's in and it looks to have enough clearance, so we're just capping the mount off so it remains strong. And then the car will be able to steer again, which is something it hasn't done in months, so that's cool. What's up guys, it's the end of day two. Almost the end of day two, it's like seven o'clock. Got some updates. We're about ready to start both cars, actually. So, uh, James has got his wiring squared away, and the engine bay is pretty much plumbed up. We're at the checking for leak stage again, and I think that's where we left uh, left off last time we filmed. Is our car had a fat leak, and we pulled the engine out. The engine's back in. Uh, everything's actually in this time. Like last time, it was just like kind of bolted in, but now the headers, or the turbo manifold's bolted on. Uh, the turbo's plumbed. It's got the drain, it's got the feed. Uh, all of our wiring's coming along. Uh, we'll probably be able to start the 13 Beetle in this video, and then ours probably gonna have to save till next time, just because there's just a little bit of too much little things. That's what we really like, the little details. Uh, we got the steering shaft in, which is cool, but uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know, we might, we might try to start it. We're having some fuel pump issues right now, which is what Devin's over there doing. So what you'll see happening here is see the post on the right and how there's none on the left. When tightening that nut, it snapped off. So we've made the connection with the loop and then it's covered it with a ton of epoxy. And we're gonna trust our fuel system on that. So there you go. I assume you're just buttoning up. Yeah, just, stuff. just trying to get this RTV all cleaned off so I can put the the little like thermostat water tank thing back on that was on this before. James and I were just talking about how these cars haven't ran in so long that we hadn't really planned this far and it's weird that they're gonna be running now. Yeah, we're kind of surprised that it's just <laughs> suddenly happening. Like, yeah, we were we were starting to believe that we actually can't get anything done, so. Yeah, we were starting to listen to all the commenters saying that we never finish anything. But as it turns out, like if nothing catastrophic happens, Stuff happens in a good way. Yeah, we'll yeah. be able to drive. We'll be able to drive these next week, which is nuts. Yeah, which is fucking crazy. I've had this car for three years and driven it like four times. <laughs> That's the Datsun. We've owned it for two years, and it's been probably down the road a handful of times. Yeah, it's got like uh, like 50 miles on it. In the <laughs> yeah. Of ownership. Yep. Yeah, this thing like the first year I had it, I put a lot of miles on it, but like since then, like no, nah, this thing hasn't moved under its own power more than like 20 miles in three years. <laughs> so what do we do? We got we got that race in May. Yeah, we got the track day in May, which maybe, just maybe, this thing might be working well enough. You were having your doubts it. earlier about that. Yeah, but I mean, I got thought my wiring wasn't all going to work, but it seems fine. So, I mean, the car's not on fire yet, so that's good. It's had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be super shit. cool if you could drive this at the track day. Yeah, I prefer to drive it at the track day to driving any of my other shit. Well, the starter sounds angry. I can't tell if I'm actually getting any spark. Would you like me to put a light on that, sir? Yes, please. <laughs> what are you doing with that, dude? Shoot, man. It's a fucking laser guy. Alright, ready to try.
Okay, no spark. Spark or no? No spark. Try the other wire. Okay, we're on the other wire. It'd be great if those two were my dead coils. So we think there's um just some wiring things. The coils aren't they're not they're not getting talked to. They're not uh, throwing sparks. So instead of dropping this video how it is right now, uh, we we're pretty confident that we can get both going uh, Monday. on on Monday. So this will just be like one really long complete video instead of like oh didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we'll see you guys on Monday. What's up guys, stuff is taking a little bit longer than uh, we thought it would and it's not Monday when we said it would start. It's uh, it's Wednesday, but it does start. But I'm not gonna show you that right now, but we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you it eventually. And James, your shit might run too. We're at exactly the same point. <laughs> but I know mine runs. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the last time that we talked, we work better with the camera off, so we just like didn't film that much. We got the wires situated, everything's buttoned up, everything looks good, and Sam right now has made this uh, this nice little support for the uh, the cooling system. And you guys might have noticed that as soon as we picked up the camera, a train came by. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but I'm not gonna refilm any of this because no, it's not fucking that. worth if, it. If you started refilming it, a train would come by. That's true. Um. Basically everything's bolted up. This engine's looking real clean, uh, minus the hentai stickers. But you know that's <laughs> that's part of what that's, we do here, I guess. Yeah, yep. And um, I mean, after this, it'll have cooling. So we'll come back to this in a little bit because I think we're gonna we're about ready as a garage to transition over to trying to get the Beetle to start because uh, we just worked our asses off, got this thing running. So before we do anything with that, and before I start this for you guys, we're gonna go over to the Beetle. Yeah, finish the last couple things, hopefully try to start that too. Yeah, and I also forgot to mention, the interior is pretty much ready to, yeah. There's so many wires in there. Flip some of those switches. Oh look, look at that shit, oh boom, oh boom. Oh oh yeah, they light up or whatever, so. Oh interior is pretty much by, this thing's gonna be driving like this weekend, guys. Um, Anyways, we're getting distracted again. Let's go over to the battle. Yeah, let's let's see what I've done. It's difficult to give updates on James's car because there's an incredible amount of shit happening. Uh, yeah, yeah, like an unfathomably large amount of shit happening in this engine. Bay. You can see how infinitely more complicated this engine is than our. Look at it. Are you kidding? It's just like here's a plumbing. plumbing. Here, here's a fun plumbing. game to play. Can you fit your hand through here to reach the firewall? No. <laughs> No, you fucking can't. Not what, anymore. What you guys need to know is that apart from timing, it's ready to go. And so now it's just a test and tune, and you guys will be here for the first start. Yeah. If we're not boring you with all this monotonous talking. Everything's working. I mean, I'm sure we're boring, but there's going to be rooms. Yeah, there's going to be rooms. So, you know, if you want to just skip to that, here's a timestamp. <laughs> Devin, when you edit, put that timestamp there. I'm going to forget it. Uh, so what James is doing is he's finding TDC of the motor and so he's just jamming a piece of wire into the spark plug hole and uh, at different crank positions to find where the uh, Sam Mark really? top, my mark bottom, in the middle is oh. TDC. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how it works. That was Kay. the worst description I've ever heard. But. Whatever dude, it's a description. We're trying. No, wait, plug my coils in. <laughs> it wants to. Low compression rotaries. Give it, um, it's retarded, so give it maybe like five degrees. <laughs> 65. Yeah, try 65. How old are you, JP? Jesus. What? <laughs> it's not my fault it's retarded. Yeah, that's right. When you're done. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, do the other way. 55. What the fuck? Okay. God damn. What the fuck? Okay, got that. I hear you trying, Deesh. Alright, so we're not having any luck with the Beetle. Uh, James <laughs> thinks a fuse inside the uh, the ECU's Stop. burnt out. Stop joking about my shitty fucking life. Hey, you can come uh, film this so Devin has to do Yeah, so uh, we're going to start this because it works. 
James. It technically works. No, it doesn't. So there you nerds have it. It's going to be driving because we got our freaking shaft today too, boys. You boys, shaft. you boys want you want to talk about my shaft? <laughs> Here it is. So this is the only thing stopping this from moving under its own power, kind of. I mean, there's more, but <laughs> there's a, there's a list of other things, but they're all things we can get done. But, like the brakes but and the dude, power. we haven't heard this engine since last July. I know, it's it's freaking awesome that it starts and it actually like runs. It's really loud and it burns your eyeballs, but totally runs. <laughs> Why was it burning your eyeballs? I don't know, extra like gas fumes everywhere. <laughs> shit, it was stinky. Really stinky. <laughs> All right, so my piece of shit, for some reason, the little voltage reference fuse burnt out. Luckily, uh, Amp BFI was nice enough to include a spare, oh, so. That, that, that one totally works. Yeah, that one works, so, so that's. I'm gonna put that one over there. I don't I think this is the main issue, but it's definitely one of them, so. Yeah, it's a start. Yeah, it's something. So, well, he messes with the Beetle. Um, Sam's actually gonna hook up side exit. Just needs to be welded on. All right, you know, um, I'm gonna walk over here and pretend like I didn't just hear it start, and we can act like it's the first time. And you can leave that in the video again. you watch the reel. My side exit might be stuck on the car. <laughs> Very abrupt death, but it was- That counts! <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Both of them run! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh, we got one more thing to do today, boys, and this is the ghetto exhaust version. I don't know. Four hundred ninety point six. Yeah. Got some turbo spool. It seems to be running a little better than mine. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit, James. Just a little. The throttle is working now. The throttle's working pretty well. The thing's waking up. Yeah, that was fucking rad. It honestly seems like the exhaust made a big difference as far as like drivability goes. It sounds way different too. It sounds a lot better. Yeah, it does. That's gonna do it for this one. I know we didn't film a lot, but I'm sure most of you guys just care that this, uh, this piece of crap runs. It is looking clean, it is running right. So uh, there's that and James' car started too. Yep, we're uh, a couple <laughs> days late on when we previously anticipated it, but. All right, that was gonna pick a winner for this video's giveaway. I don't, what are you doing? You just say. <laughs> this is my home now. If you guys aren't familiar, we give away products from BoostedTrades.com every single video. Um, if you guys wanna win, all you gotta do is like, like subscribe, leave a comment. And now we're requiring you have to hit the bell too. Well, there's no way for us to verify that, but <laughs> please hit the bell. All right, this video's winner is Alec Martinez. Hit us up at teamboosted at boostedshades.com or through any of our social media platforms like Boosted Shades on Instagram, and uh, we'll ship you something. If you guys want to win, I just said how to win. Uh, we ask you guys a question at the end of every video to make it easier. This video's question is, we want to know if you were a cop, which one of these two cars would you pull over first, the Beetle or the Datsun? You could also throw in a reason why you would pull either over if you want to get creative, but that's going to do it for this one. Yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Uh, stay tuned for Korean barbecue segment. You guys could just lady in the tramp and eat the pork. Oh. <laughs> Bitman can one bite that. It might burn you. I would like let it cool down, but I'm I am. That's why I'm just holding it here. I'm not just gonna shove this hot meat stick in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know how bad iPhone audio is, but we it's pretty uh good. We owe you guys a cooking segment, but this is gonna suffice for now. Devin's gonna one bite one of the Is that pork belly? This one, yeah. So the spicy pork it's belly. A giant piece of bacon. You can see it when it's done cooking. It's spicy too. I let it cool down. That's gonna double as an alarm clock, bud. <laughs> no. Yeah, don't be a bitch, just go for it. No. You can do it.
but we can't kill Devin. <laughs> he does all your wiring. You gotta be nice to him. Uh, but it's all done already. <laughs> oh yeah, he can die then. It's fire, as always. <laughs> <laughs>